Good evening, my fellow scientists. Today I want to talk about an article I read about a lithium sulfur battery sent to me by a commenter. Thank you for that. Uh, the article is in Scientific Advances, which is an open access journal, so you can check it out. I'll put a link in the description. The first thing to understand is just how exactly a lithium sulfur battery works. The idea is that lithium metal is going to oxidize. It's going to lithium plus. Lithium plus is then going to move across the battery. On the other side of the battery, the sulfur cathode is going to accept those electrons and become sulfide, S2 minus. And that means that both electrodes are elemental, which means that there's potentially a ton of energy there, not a lot of filler necessarily. We'll come back to that. Now, the big problem with lithium sulfur batteries is the what's called the sulfide shuttle or the polysulfide shuttle. In most lithium electrolytes, they're not water, they're some sort of oily substance because lithium reacts violently with water. And so they have to use some something else. And generally, polysulfides, something like S8-2- is going to be soluble in those kinds of solvents and then it's going to diffuse. And if these polysulfides, S4, 5, 6, and up, can diffuse, they'll get across the battery and react. And that doesn't make electrons flow through the load, that doesn't make for a successful battery. And ultimately, a cake of lithium disulfide forms on the lithium electrode and really spoils it completely. So the polysulfide shuttle has been an area of research for decades now, trying to shut it down, trying to build a barrier that will keep all the sulfur on one side and just allow the lithium ions to go through, but still retain all the right properties for a rechargeable high density energy, uh, an energy density. There is another failure mode for lithium sulfur batteries though, and that's what this particular paper is about. This paper is about the fact that you have to use a lot of filler in the sulfur side of the battery in order to get electrons through it. Sulfur is a insulator. So if you want electrons to go into the sulfur, you have to provide a path. That path might be something like a conductive carbon, carbon black, and getting that to play nice in that system is a bit of a trick. If the sulfur is dissolving and then depositing again, if the carbon is soaking up ions, then the whole thing is going to expand and contract. That expansion and contraction can ultimately destroy the battery physically or destroy the barrier to the polysulfide shuttle and the whole thing falls apart. So these great folks figured out how to prepare their electrode in such a way that they see very little of this volume expansion and contraction in the electrode is much more stable. And thankfully the method is also a fairly benign method, doesn't require a lot of uh, fancy processing and equipment and or extremely high temperatures. So it's exciting stuff. I think that the lithium sulfur chemistry is a pretty impressive earth abundant kind of chemistry relative to some other uh, lithium cells. Certainly sulfur is very cheap. One might hope that someday it could be a sodium sulfur chemistry instead, and that would be an amazingly inexpensive and high energy density cell. Uh, but uh, we'll, we'll come back to some sodium ion battery chemistry next week. I have a paper picked out, so I hope you turn in for that. Uh, coming up soon also, we will try to get an update on the all iron battery 2.0. We do have some results, so please do come back next week and we'll talk about those then. Until then, uh, I, this has been Peter Allen for the Allen Lab, and I... Hope you have a great week.